Hey, que la que hay, mi amigo, Rocky here from SpeakSpanishFaster.com. En este video, vamos a hablar, in this video, we are going to be talking about how to improve your Spanish comprehension. Now, before we get into that topic fully, I do want to address a question that I received from one of our great subscribers. Now, the question is, necesito ser más valiente cuando tengo la oportunidad de hablarlo. Can you talk about tips for talking to native speakers, having the courage to do so, maybe etiquette, best way to have a conversation as opposed to trying to translate it in my mind, taking too much time. Now, the reason I wanted to address this question on this video, because I think it ties in very closely with how to improve your Spanish comprehension. Now, one of the big problems that people have when they're trying to learn Spanish is that when it's spoken to them, and don't worry, this happens anytime anyone's trying to learn a new language, whenever the language is spoken to them, they try to translate it in their brain, and then they try to think about what they're going to say, then they got to translate that, and then they have to refer it back to who, whoever it is they are talking to. So let me give you an example. If someone is trying to talk to you in Spanish, what would probably happen if you're not very good at Spanish yet, is that they would speak in Spanish, your mind would go crazy trying to pick out the words they're saying. It would then try to translate those words from Spanish to English so you understand them. And then your mind will continue to go crazy and you'll try to think about what your response is going to be. And then you would try to translate that from English to Spanish so that you could refer it back to the person. Well, while your mind, while your mind is doing all this, while you're taking time to do all this, the person is probably still speaking or waiting for a response from you. So... There's precious time in conversations, and this is why people get kind of so worked up when they're trying to speak Spanish. And this is one of the reasons why they have trouble understanding because they're thinking so much during the process. So that's why I wanted to answer this question along with this video, because part of the question here is really about comprehension. Now, first, let's address the first part of the question. Can you talk about tips for talking to native speakers, having the courage to do so, and maybe etiquette? So personally speaking, and after living uh, overseas in a Spanish-speaking country and visiting a lot of Spanish-speaking countries, I can say that if Spanish is not your first language, you should not be afraid to talk with the natives in their language. And I'll explain why in just a second. But I know it can be difficult because we're like, oh, they, they won't understand us. They're going to make fun of us or they're not going to like our Spanish. Those are our thoughts um, when we're trying to speak their language, right? Those are the thoughts we have. It's the same thoughts I had when I was recently in Paris um, and I, I don't speak French and I didn't even really practice. So I was trying to speak the little words that I knew and I just wasn't confident and I thought that they would make fun of me. And yeah, so pretty much that's what all of us do. That's what's on our mind when we go to another country. We think they're going to make fun of us or um, you know, whatever the case may be. But I can say, I'm not going to say for every country this is the same, but for the majority of the countries, especially in Latin America and in the Caribbean, um, the people are, they welcome you with open arms and they love the fact that you are trying to speak their language and they will even help you speak their language, especially when they see that you're actually trying. Instead of going there and being stuck up like, oh, I'm only speaking English because I only speak English, you better understand me. Instead of doing that, it's kind of like you are giving yourself up and you are in their country and you are trying to please them. You are their guests and you are trying to communicate with them in their language. So the first part that I think can really help you if you are going to another country or you are just trying to speak with natives is not to be afraid. Um, be confident and that's the only way you're going to improve is by speaking with them, making mistakes. They will correct you, but they most of the time won't make fun of you. Um, now, of course, there are situations. I can't speak for everybody. Of course, you're going to meet people every now and then that might try to make fun of you, but just ignore those people. Honestly, if they really have nothing better to do than to make fun of you, then who's really the person that needs help? Um, but yeah, so keep that in mind. Natives, I like I said, I can personally speak from past experiences with friends from other countries that only speak Spanish. Um, and when I bring friends there, they never make fun of them. They always try to help them. They always try to teach them words, even because I'm Puerto Rican and I lived in the Dominican Republic. And when I first moved there, they obviously I had different words than them. Now I could speak Spanish and everything, but 
um, they had different words that, than I used. And some of the words I didn't know and I wouldn't understand them. And I would say like, you know, que eso? like, what's that word? Yo no entiendo. And they would say, they would break it down for me like, oh, vaina, eso vaina, or whatever. Like, vaina, I know the word, but that's just an example. Um, and there would be words that I would say that they wouldn't know. And they would say, you know, what's that word? And I would tell them what the word was. And there was never this thing of, oh, making fun. Oh, you don't know that word. Or they never said to me like, oh, you don't know what vaina is. Or you don't know what this is. Or you don't know what that is. They, there was never that that went on. And I can say from... Um, being in schools in other countries, in Spanish-speaking countries, and interacting with students and other teachers and just interacting with everybody, I can honestly tell you that the Spanish students never made fun of the American students or the English students or any other students that weren't from a Spanish-speaking country and that didn't speak Spanish as their native language. So that's the first thing to remember when you are interacting with the native speakers. Don't be afraid um, nine times out of 10, they're going to welcome you with open arms and they're going to help you. And that's going to help you learn Spanish faster. Now let's kind of get into the next part, which is the actual comprehension part. The first thing I talk about this all the time, at least I have, you know, I talk about it with my students. I've mentioned it a few times on this channel is that you want to familiarize yourself with the Spanish that you will be using. So if you know you're going to Puerto Rico or you know you're going to Spain, then try to brush up on your Spain Spanish. Learn Spanish words. Watch different um, Spanish TV shows, Netflix movies in Spanish. Um, try to watch interviews from Spanish artists or, or actors or whatever the case may be. But really try to familiarize yourself with the accent. Um, this is something even I have to do as a native speaker, but when I go to other countries, because their Spanish is different than my Spanish. So when I went to Madrid, what I tried to do was find either interviews or, or shows and things like that from Spain um, or from Spanish people so that I could learn the rhythm, how they use words, their, their pronunciation for different words so that I can make it easier for myself. So when I went to that country, it wasn't just out of the blue, a whole different accent because that's tough. I mean, even when I went to Madrid the first few days, it was difficult to understand everything just because of the way they talk. And even when I watch shows on Netflix, um, whether it's like a show like Naticos or a show like, you know, there's uh, one about like bank, uh, bank robbers or something. It takes place in Spain. But even as I'm watching that show, I don't understand every single word because some of the words I literally have never heard before. It's the equivalent to you going to some law class or philosophy class and them using big English words or different English words than you've ever heard before. It's not that you don't know your language. It's just that you've never heard that word before. So remember that um, whenever you know, obviously you can't account for all times because if you're in the States, then you will be interacting with people from all different countries. But for the most part, try to figure out what are the nat what where are the natives from that you will be surrounded by the most. Again, like if you're in New York, New York City, you'll probably be interacting with a lot of Puerto Ricans, um, Dominicans, and of course there's all different races in New York, but like from where my dad's from, my dad's from the Bronx, um, and I have family in like Washington Heights is like all Dominicans. The Bronx where my dad grew up is like all Puerto Ricans. So I know like if I'm in that area, I got to be able to interact with the Puerto Ricans. If I'm in Washington Heights, I got to be able to interact with the Dominicans. If I go to Miami where my sister currently lives, I got to be able to interact with the Cubans and the Venezuelans and the Colombians. Um, so you have, yes, you, you will need to be, be prepared. And the beauty is with Spanish is if you understand, if you understand it well, then you'll be able to understand pretty much all the accents um, from all different countries, minus a few words here and there from local slang and stuff. But you want to try to familiarize yourself with the Spanish that you're going to be hearing most. Again, the beauty is that um, like Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cubans, their Spanish is pretty similar. So if you learn one of those, you'll probably be able to interact with all three of those countries. 
Um, it's the same with like Colombia, Venezuela. They speak a very similar Spanish. So if you can understand them, um, if you can understand Colombians, you'll probably be able to understand Venezuelans and, and some of the other countries in that South America area. Now, where I live now in Washington, D.C., there's a lot of El Salvadorians, there's a lot of Mexicans, like Guatemalans, and I would say they all have fairly similar Spanish. So by being able to talk with one of them, one of those countries, you're able to pretty much talk to all of them. So again, with that being said, whenever you know you are either going to a certain country or you are going to be surrounded and interacting with a certain type of native um, then it's best to study up on their type of Spanish, their accent, because the more you familiarize yourself with the way that they say the words, the easier it is going to be to comprehend their words. Um, now, again, you can't cover all bases. I would focus in on one, the one that you are going to be interacting with the most. Focus in on that and then um, kind of broaden your horizons. And I think this is one of the biggest mistakes from the way that they teach Spanish in school. And again, I talk about this all the time as well, is that I'm not a hater of school Spanish. I actually graduated and got a degree in Spanish because I was an interpreter and that was one of my goals was to be a Spanish interpreter. So I had to do that. But I can say from actually being in Spanish classes, one of the biggest mistakes I think is that one, the majority of the teachers in our university were from Spain. And the majority of the Spanish we learned was from Spain. And then I get out, you know, to translate and the majority of the people I'm working with in DC or for some of the um, cases that we were working were from either Mexico, like Colombia and things like that. And I didn't even really interact with people from Spain. So all throughout school, from middle school to college, I'm learning Spain, Spanish, vosotros and all that. And then I get in the real world and I never even hear that Spanish, all right? Now, lucky for me, again, I grew up speaking Spanish, so um, I already knew it, but there were some people that I worked with who were either translators. Many of these people had to just translate letters and stuff because they, you know, these were the non-native Spanish speakers. They translated more of the writing and the letters because they couldn't always understand Spanish speakers. Because all they had learned in school the whole time was how to understand people from Spain. Then they got in the real world interacting with Dominicans, Cubans and stuff, and they couldn't interact with them. I remember one time I was in class and we were just talking. Um, a lot of times one of my teachers, she was from Spain and we were talking and I was talking and I said something like fast and like Puerto Rican Spanish and she couldn't even understand it. Um, and at that time I was like, dang, the Spanish teacher can't understand me. And I didn't really understand it then because, you know, I'm in college and I'm just like, pa, you know, making fun of it. But as I got older and started um, interacting with more Spanish um, from different countries, I realized like, oh, snap, this is a real thing. Like, it's difficult to understand everybody. So, again, last thing I'll say about this specifically, about the comprehension part, um, about the studying a certain native country is whatever Spanish you are surrounded by, again, if you're like in Texas and you're dealing with a lot of Mexicans, then you want to really familiarize yourself with Mexican Spanish. Um, if you're in another part of the world or another part of the States and you're dealing with a certain type of Spanish, try to familiarize yourself with that Spanish. And keep in mind, as you improve in that Spanish, you will improve in Spanish across the board but there's no need trying to learn every single type of Spanish if you're only going to be dealing with one. So instead of trying to learn them all, learn the one that you deal with most and then let the others come to you. But again, don't get discouraged. I mean, like I said earlier, when I went to Madrid um, for the first time, it was my first time in Spain, I had trouble understanding the first few days. And it's easy to get discouraged. Here I am, a Spanish teacher and a former interpreter and I'm like, damn, I, I can't understand these people, you know, and, and it does get discouraging, but realize that even natives struggle when they go to other countries. So it's easy to get discouraged, but don't be and let the natives help you. Don't let that stop you. The only way you're going to learn is by kind of, you know, getting that confidence up and being brave and speaking to the natives. Now, the next thing you want to focus on um, to help you 
with your Spanish speaking in, in certain situations so you don't have to think about the words so much is to think about the situation you're going to be in. Think about the context. Think about the actual situation that you're going to be in. For example, if you go to a restaurant, um, think about what happens when you go to the restaurant in your home country or your hometown. It's pretty much universal. Like you get to the restaurant, they ask you how many, you say however many, you sit down, um, they give you a menu, they'll ask you what do you want to drink, you tell them what you want to drink, then they'll come back, ask you what do you want to eat, then while you're there, they're going to ask, oh, is your meal good? You're going to say it's good. And then they're going to come back and say, oh, do you want dessert? So you know the scenario in a restaurant. So think about the interactions you are going to have. Like what's going to happen? You're, you're going to arrive and they're going to say, una mesa para cuanto? And they're going to say, a table for how many? And you say, dos. Like, una mesa para dos, por favor. So give me a table for two, please. As soon as you get there, the waiter and mesero is going to give you a menu and he's going to say algo de tomar or algo de beber. So tomar y beber are part of my Puerto Rican tomar. <laughs> tomar and beber, those are to drink. So remember those two words. If you hear anything, all you have to do is think about the word tomar, beber. Those should be kind of the key words that as soon as you hear, doesn't matter what else he said. Algo de tomar, quieres algo de tomar, quiere tomar algo. Like you don't have to focus on any of that. All you have to focus on is, did they say tomar or beber? If they said those and you know they're asking, what do you want to drink? Go in there already knowing what you want to drink. Agua, una soda. So keep it simple and that way you don't have to think about it. You already know what your answer is going to be to when you hear the word tomar. All right? So... And then the next thing is think about, okay, they're going to come back and they'll probably say like, you know, que quieres comer? What do you want to eat? Um, que vas a tener? What are you going to have? So just think of those key words because they're always going to be asking the question, um, comer, tener, what do you want to eat? What do you want to have? So think about those. As soon as you hear those key words, you already know what is being said. So your mind doesn't have to think and translate that. It's already like, okay, tomar, boom. I know what I'm going to respond. Comer, boom. I know what I'm going to respond. Try to familiarize yourself with the menu too before you go to the restaurant. Look it up. Figure out some things on the menu that you like. So that way when you get there, it's very simple. You don't have to think too much um, about what it is that you're going to eat. So um, that will help you is think about the situations you're going to be in. Um, now, obviously, if you're just hanging out with a native, then it's a little more difficult to do this. But for the most part, um, the majority of us, if we don't speak the language too well, we're not really trying to get in those one-on-one -on -one situations right now with the natives. First, we're trying to get our confidence up, trying to familiarize ourselves with as much Spanish as possible, trying to talk to the waiters and um, trying to order our own foods. And we're trying to keep it simple. So remember that in the beginning is really try to think about the situation you were going to be in. What are the words you're going to hear and need for that situation so that you don't have to think about it when you get on that scene all right and then of course some other things might come up and at least then you'll have some space in your brain to think about those things if the waiter brings up some random thing um instead of having to worry about did he ask do i want did i want to drink or what do i want to eat so go in there knowing knowing those keywords tomar beber comer tener think about those keywords and think about what you're going to say. Think about what you're going to drink. Think about what you're going to eat. Think about if you're going to have dessert um, before you even get there. And that will really help you out with being comfortable in the situation. Now, the next thing I want to talk about for your Spanish comprehension is passive versus active listening, which is better. Or this isn't even really a question because it's pretty obvious which is better. But should you do both? Or should you only do one or, you know, what should you do? So first off, what is passive listening? What's active listening? So passive listening, it and this is recommended a lot of times for students is, oh, just play Spanish music all the time. Just have the TV on in the back in the background and stuff and you'll pick up words. Um, and I haven't seen this work too well with students um, because if you don't know a language, it's very hard to pick up the words in the background. So the first thing to do is active listening. 
this is kind of similar to passive and active reading. Like you can either read, like speed read through a book, or you can actively read, you know, line by line. Yes, it might take you longer, but guess what? You're going to retain much more information. So it's the same thing with passive versus active listening. Um, when you're listening, you want to listen actively. If you're listening to a song, let's say break it down verse by verse, line by line. Listen to what was said maybe write it down and then um, stop, rewind, do it again, do it again. Actively listen and try to pick up the words. Do the same thing for TV. Um, watch, especially if you're watching something like Nauticals. It might take you a long time to get through an episode, but listen to what Pablo said on Nauticals. What did the translation say? Okay, rewind it. Now try to listen. Oh, okay, I heard that now. He said carro, so now I know he meant car, now I hear that word. So to do some of that active listening. All right, do that first where you're really focused on, you're not just listening in the background, but you're focused in on what is being said or what, uh, what you're hearing. Um, now it is good sometimes to have passive listening when you become more familiar with Spanish because I'm not gonna lie, sometimes you're gonna be out there, you're not gonna be paying attention, somebody's gonna tell you something when you're not paying attention, that's when the active listening comes into play. But guess what, as soon as you hear that passive listening, you'll probably turn in, you'll engage with that person, oh, okay, he think, oh, see, blah, 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 and you'll start talking, and then you'll know, then you'll be in the active listening mode. So for instance, I recently was at a restaurant, and the guy asked me, you know, did I speak Spanish? He said I have an accent when I talk English, I was like, I don't, I, that was the first time I ever got that, that he knew I spoke Spanish because of my English accent. But anyway, so um, he was the bartender. I was sitting at the bar. Um, I was watching TV and he was way back there and he said, be back here in DC. And he asked me, do I live in DC? But it was kind of passive listening. I wasn't even paying attention. And then um, I just heard him speak the Spanish. So I assumed it was to me, but I had no idea what, what he said. And that was like the passive Thing. All I heard him say was DC. So I kind of assumed he's asking again, that's the keywords. I kind of assumed he asked that I live in DC. Why else would he mention DC? So I said, um, que? Like, que dijiste? And he said, vivo aquí en DC. And I was like, oh, oh, see, see. I, I kind of knew what he said, but at the same time, I need him to say it to me again. So it's the passive listening. Mm, didn't really help me. I had to actively engage with him to actually understand him. So yes, passive listening is good because at times it's going to pop up, but at the same time, um, you're gonna to have to have active listening skills are much more important because anytime somebody says something to you, you're probably much more likely going to actively engage with them. So practice your active listening um, much more than you practice your passive listening. It's not a bad idea to have Spanish just on and around you as much as possible, but it's not really gonna help you unless you're actively learning the words. Last thing I'll say about this topic about active and passive listening, I actually go to a barbershop, there's like five Puerto Ricans there, um, there's two Dominicans, one dude from Guatemala in the barbershop. My barber, he's Puerto Rican, but he's from New York, and he doesn't speak any Spanish. Even though his girlfriend speaks Spanish, even though his mom, grandma, dad speaks Spanish, he doesn't speak Spanish. So we're in the barbershop and he's talking and he's just asking me, you know, about, you know, I'm Puerto Rican. So, you know, my family's from New York, his family's from New York. So we have that bond. He's my barber. So we're real cool. He's like, yeah, man, I just could never learn Spanish. I'm like, you're in here with all these dudes speaking Spanish all the time. You don't, you should be able to learn easy. He's like, nah, nah I can't learn it. And he just, he just does it. You know, it's just kind of a passive thing. He never really actively tries to listen to what's being said and really actively tries to learn the language. So just because you're surrounded by it, like this guy is probably in the best situation you could be if you're in America trying to learn Spanish. He's literally around, you know, four or five barbers that only speak Spanish. Um, there's like, yeah, like I said, like four Puerto Ricans, two or three Dominicans, um, and one dude from Guatemala. And he doesn't even try you know, he's passively around him all day, but he doesn't actively try to engage in it. So just because you're surrounded by passive Spanish or you're listening to it or whatever, doesn't mean you're going to learn it. So remember that, um, stay confident in every single situation you're in. If you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. It happens to us all, even native speakers. Don't get discouraged. 
Keep working on your Spanish. Until next time, I'll see you then.